Lord, we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. We are grateful for another day to be, as we say, walking on the topsoil. And we want to say Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, something that a lot of people don't want to say nowadays, but certainly Jesus is the reason for the season. We are grateful for all that God has done for us. We're grateful for life, health, and a reasonable portion of strength. We thank God for allowing us to come into your homes or wherever it is that you are viewing this today. We thank God for you, and we thank God that you have made it thus far this year. So many people that I know of personally, some that I know of personally that have gone on to be with the Lord, uh, but God has smiled on us and has given us one more day, as we say, walking on the topsoil. So we are blessed to be in the house, amen, today. We bring you greetings from the city of Chandler, Arizona, where I am Pastor George McCree, and I pastor New Vision Christian Fellowship Church here in Chandler, excuse me, Mesa, Arizona. Amen. The address of our church is 9350 East Brown Road in Mesa. Amen. That is east of Ellsworth on Brown Road. So if you're ever in our area, we would love to see you come by and, and to um, just fellowship with us. Amen. Again, this is the Christmas Christmas season. Amen. A wonderful time to be alive. Amen. And as we uh, look to Jesus, as we said, he is the reason for the season. Uh, we uh, emphasize this is Christ must, uh, because Christ must be in the season for it to be true. Amen. And so I am grateful uh, for this year. I'm grateful for, for all of those that have supported us over this, this year. Uh, we're grateful for everyone from, from my family to our friends, to our, our saints there at New Vision, and to all of you who, who watch us faithfully, those who contribute to us, we want to say thank you to you as well. All right, we're going to pray today that God's blessing will be upon this lesson and that you'll receive something uh, from it today. Today, we're going to just be speaking about the Christmas story. Uh, last week, we talked about uh, the power of the tongue. And if the Lord says the same, we will continue that next week. But we must stop, amen, today to speak about the Lord Jesus Christ. There's not enough preaching and teaching about him. Let's pray. Eternal Father, we want to thank you for this day. For again, this is the day that you have made, and we have made the choice to rejoice and be glad in it. We are grateful, Lord, for life, health, and a reasonable portion of strength. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done for us this year, for how you kept us. Many people died from COVID-19. Many families were shattered. Many uh, people went through a lot of things uh, in their bodies, in their, their health, in their emotions, in their finances. Many uh, went through a lot of things. But God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving your son to die on the cross for us. And for that, we are so grateful. Father, now we pray tonight as we go into our lesson that you will give us ears to hear and hearts to receive, and we will praise you for it, God, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so tonight we're going to be dealing with uh, the Christmas story, and we're going to be coming to you tonight from uh, a very familiar passage of scripture what we consider the greatest verse of the Bible, which is St. John 3.16. Again, the greatest verse in the Bible, St. John 3.16. And we're going to look at Luke chapter number two, and we will look at Matthew chapter number two. So let's, let's, let's uh, go into this lesson today with a heart of thanksgiving for what God has done for us 
let's let's look in this lesson and really delve into uh, the uh, what Christ did for us and the length that he went for us. For you will remember, even when we, we read the prophecies of Jesus and when it talks about his coming, it tells us many things that before the foundation of the world was, Christ died for us. In other words, the decision had been made that man was going to mess up, but God was going to send a solution in the name of Jesus Christ. It was going to be his son or the manifestation of God in flesh. So God who could not die, God who was omnipotent, made himself a man to come into the world. Now, some people uh, have issues about this, uh, uh, the idea of, of God being able to come and the, the, the spirit overshadowing a virgin Mary, and she brings forth a child. But let me remind you that this is the same God that in the beginning, amen, he brought forth Adam and Eve without parents. He brought forth them, amen. He goes into um, the dust of the earth. He forms man in the dust of the earth. Then he breathes into him the breath of the, the, the breath of life, and Adam became a living soul. And he takes Eve from his 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 um his rib. Now the same God that was able to do that, certainly that powerful and mighty God can overshadow a woman who never knew a man, and bring forth his son Jesus Christ. All right, so let's start at, at uh, as I said, the greatest verse in the Bible, uh, which is uh, St. John 3.16. St. John 3.16 reads as follows. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The greatest verse of the Bible, because when we pick uh, this verse apart, we see the greatness comes forth. For God, who is the greatest one, so loved the world, which is the greatest number. God, the greatest one, who loved the greatest number of the world. This time, there are over 6 billion in the world today. But God so loved, loved is the greatest devotion. He loved the world that he gave to give greatest devotion, his only begotten son, which is the greatest gift. That whosoever believeth, in him, which is the greatest condition to believe in Jesus Christ, should not perish, which is the greatest mercy, but shall have, have been the greatest promise, everlasting life, the greatest result. So St. John 3, 16, is the greatest verse in the Bible. Now, let me look at that as we go into the, before we go into the, the, the Christmas story. Let's look at that uh, uh, tonight. Uh, for God so loved the world. Uh, as we said, God, if you were to do a connection here, you would have uh, the greatest one and the greatest number. For God, so love the world. So God is the greatest one or the greatest person or the greatest deity. But God so love the world, the greatest number. Now, I don't know how many billions of people have been here since a man Adam came on the scene. But when Christ died, he died for not a denomination. He didn't die for a particular ethnicity. He did not die for the Jews. He did not die for 
the Muslims. He did not die for blacks. He did not die for whites. He did not die for men. He did not die for women. Uh, but the Bible said, for God so loved the world, the world. Now, uh, what is encompassed in the world? That is all mankind. Now, I know we have a problem with that because there is sin in the world. But God loves all of the inhabitants of the world. Even though, amen, he hates sin. The inhabitants of the world, God loves. Yes, we have those that, that are murderers, those that are liars, cheaters, stealers, those that, that are have a, an alternate lifestyle or homosexual gay people. Uh, but understand that when Christ came, the Bible said God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He did not limit it, it to anyone and neither should you or I limit our love to anyone or to limit it to a particular group of people and for us to um, uh, put others on the outside. Your job and my job is to be like Christ. Christ so loved the world that he gave. And Apostle Paul uh, picks it up when he's talking about marriage. And he says, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. What did he do? He gave himself for it. So even in that, we see where, 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 where God is trying to bring into uh, our, our world today the idea of loving someone else. And the Bible said that we ought to love our neighbors as ourselves. And he says that there are the two great commandments to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. Then he says, and thy neighbor as thyself. So even then God is, is bringing home the idea that we ought to be giving to someone else, amen. So God loved the world. And what did he do? That he gave. So, so if we are like God, then we are to be givers, amen. We live in an, an age uh, where we have a lot of, uh, of, of people who are what we call entitled. Think that you ought to do for them. Uh, uh, we have many people that are, are lazy and want others to do for them. Well, uh, that is not of God. Anytime you love, Love is an action word. Love gives. Love does something. Love doesn't see my brother or sister in need and not do something about it. Love doesn't see, amen, someone who is not saved in a, a difficult situation that you can do something about and you don't spring into action. We live in a, in a world that, that uh, uh, have a lot of what we call heroes, uh, comic heroes. Uh, you, you, you see the, the Superman and you see the, the Iron Man, you see the Batman, you see the Spider-Man, you see all of these made up people. And the idea is, is that they help the less fortunate. Well, you, my brothers and sisters, if you have Christ in your life, then this ought to be a part of who you are. It's not what you do, it's who you are. God loved the world that he gave, his only begotten son. Now, the giving here, we've got to see, is, is that when he gave, he gave his very best, his only begotten son. So when God uh, wanted to give a gift to mankind, he didn't go and, and find something that was, that was not worthy of who he was, okay? He is supreme. So what he gave to mankind was a supreme gift. That was Jesus Christ, amen. And when God thought 
about what he would do. The scripture says in St. John 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made. In him was life and the life was the light of the world. Then when we pull down to verse number 14, the scripture says, and the word became flesh. So the God of, the, of creation manifests himself in flesh. And in that flesh, that flesh was Jesus Christ. Jesus was 100% God and 100% man, not 50-50, but 100%. Amen. How, how can you, you say that? How can something be 100% a man, one thing and 100% of the other thing? I hold it in, in my hand. I hold a glass of water. The glass is 100% glass. The water inside is 100% water. So when God came, God uh, put in him, in uh, the scripture said that, uh, that, that, that God um, reconciled the world back to himself. He, he became flesh. He became Christ. Amen. And Christ reconciled the world. So God emptied himself into, well, you have the spirit. You can see the water as spirit. He empties himself into a container or a vessel. And that vessel was the flesh of Jesus Christ. So God was manifested or his spirit was placed in the flesh of Jesus Christ. He emptied himself. In other words, uh, the same stuff that God is, God is a spirit, the same stuff, the spirit can't die, amen, uh, but, but, the, but the body, the body, like the glass, the, the glass, you can break the glass, right, yeah, you can break this glass, but you can't break the water, all right, the spirit, you could not kill or destroy, but that which held the spirit was the flesh of Jesus Christ, and on the cross of Calvary is when Jesus, amen, died for your sins and for my sins. And so God loved the world that he gave, God who is superior, gave to man this superior gift. And that was Jesus Christ. You ought to be glad about that. He did not give you an inferior gift, but he gave you a superior gift. And that was Jesus Christ. And he goes on to say, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. Let's break that down. Whosoever. Amen. You have on one side, you have the world. The world right now, six, over six billion people. But he says, whosoever believeth in him. So you have in, in the world, you have those who will believe. Those who come to Christ are the whosoever. Whosoever believeth in him. Uh, we, we say, whosoever will, let him come. Anybody can come to Jesus Christ. You have the ability to come to Jesus Christ. If you don't know the Lord Jesus in the parting of your sins, you are the whosoever he's speaking about. He says, if you believe in him, amen, you will not perish. Whosoever believeth. Now let's, let's look at, at believeth for a moment because believeth is, is, is saying that, that I understand or, or, or I, I am following what I, am, I have been told. Belief is a part of having faith. Uh, scripture says that he that believeth on me, though he he he, um, he he that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He's speaking about uh, when Lazarus uh, was 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 dead. Then on another occasion, he says, if you, if you believe on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. 
belief is is something that a man uh, one must. It takes faith to believe um, in Jesus Christ. You have to get out there, Amen. And uh, I guarantee you, if your belief is in Jesus Christ, everything else will come into play. Everything else will, will come into order. All the chaos that is in your life will come into a, a place of resolution or a calming place, amen, because of your belief in Jesus Christ. So he said, whosoever believeth in him, that is the greatest condition, believing on him. That's all we have to do. You don't have to go out and, and try, to, try to, to get money to purchase your salvation. No, you can't purchase it. Uh, you don't have to go do so many penance in order to uh, uh, get salvation. No, you can't do that. The only condition that he has is, is that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. If you believe in him, perishing will not be a part of your life. Amen. But everlasting life will be a part of your life. So whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Perish is, is, is a negative term. Perish. Uh, we talk about uh, the lake of fire. We talk about hell. Amen. Perishing. Uh, our bodies perishing or our, 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 our uh, souls being uh, sent to an eternal damnation. You don't want to perish. Amen. So he says, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you will not perish. But then he says, but you will have, that's the promise, that you will have, you will possess, you will, have, you will hold on to this thing called eternal life. Amen. And that is the great, greatest result, that after you have, have been in this way, amen, God has another place for you. He has gone away to prepare a place for you that where he is, he says that you may be also. Eternal life, amen, is yours through Jesus Christ. Now, what is eternal life? What, what does it entail? Brothers and sisters, I'm not going to even try to, to, to deal with that because there's so much of eternal life. The Bible says, eyes haven't seen and ears have not heard. Neither hath it entered into the hearts of men those things that God has in store for us. So I can't even fathom in my mind. So if I can't fathom it, I certainly cannot share that with you. I cannot explain it. I don't have the words to articulate the things that God has in store for all of those, amen, who love him and all of those who have accepted him, all of those that are a part of the whosoever will, all of those, amen, who believeth in Jesus Christ, they will have everlasting life. So Jesus is coming to the earth. Let's now look at Luke chapter two. We're going to begin reading at verse number four through 16. That's Luke chapter two, verses four through 16. Now, I will tell you at the onset that when we look at Luke chapter 2 and um, Matthew chapter 2, there are some significant differences because they were not at the same moment. The, the writers are not speaking of the same um, incident or the, or the same event. Yes, it is the birth of Jesus Christ. But we'll learn a few things here as we go on, okay? Just trust me on this. Luke chapter 2, verses 4 through 16. And Joseph also went up to Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days of accomplished, the days were, excuse me, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth 
her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. There were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping over their flock by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord came to them and the glory of the Lord shone around about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Lost my place. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. That's the Christmas story. What a blessing, what a blessing. So, um, um, uh, in, in, in recap here, um, Mary and Joseph uh, lived in the city of Nazareth. And uh, when it was tax time, they, they had to, to go to Bethlehem, amen, to, uh, to be a part of, of how they taxed the people. So they made their journey there. And amen, the Bible says when they got there, um, uh, Mary uh, was, he used the term him here, the days were accomplished that she should deliver or she went into labor. And uh, when she went into labor, um, they tried to find an inn uh, for her to be in, but there was um, no Holiday Inn available, no Hilton, no Sheridan, uh, no Motel 6, not, none of those things were available. Remember, uh, people had come from all over uh, to uh, that city uh, so that they could pay their taxes or go or about uh, what their process was at that time. And so there was no room at the end. And uh, so they end up going to a stable uh, where um, Mary gave birth. Now, we, we said this on uh, uh, Sunday, uh, that Bethel, is, is, is an interesting place. Beth, excuse me, Bethlehem is an interesting place. Bethel, Beth, the Beth of a Bethel or Bethlehem, the Beth means house of. So what you have uh, when you, when you uh, read the story of, of Jacob, when Jacob um, uh, was, uh, had the, the dream of the ladder ascending from heaven uh, to earth, and he, he woke up, he saw the angels of the Lord ascending, descending. When he wakes up, he says, how dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. And he named the place Bethel, meaning Beth, house of, and El being God, Bethel. So when we look at Bethlehem, Bethlehem means house of, and, and the other means bread, house of of bread. So it's interesting here that that where is Jesus born? Jesus is born in the house of bread. Yes, this is the same Jesus that spoke to the people and said, I am the bread of life. So where should the bread of life be born? But in the house of bread. That's wonderful. Amen. Not only that, 
there was something else special about Bethlehem because Bethlehem was the place or, or the city where um, um, the lambs or, or the, the sheep were raised that were going to be offered in sacrifice. So the sacrificial lambs were raised in Bethlehem. And where is the Lamb of God born? Right where he's supposed to be. He's born in Bethlehem. It is the place where the Lamb of God was to be raised. This is the same lamb that would give up his life. And amen, the Hebrew writer tells us that, that when Christ died, he died once and for all. Amen, he was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Amen, he was that lamb that when his blood was presented, it was presented into the holies of holies in heaven. And amen, when he died, there was no more need Amen, to slay any other lambs. There was no other need for that because he became the lamb, the perfect lamb, the lamb without spot or blemish or any such thing. He became the lamb, amen, that our sins were, were, were placed upon. He became that lamb, amen, that would take away the sins of the world, not, not, not just hold them uh, well, it's just for a year. We got to go back and, and find another lamb. No, when Jesus came, he was that perfect lamb, a man that was born in Bethlehem. All right. All right. So um, this is the place where the ceremonial lambs were raised for sacrifice. All right. And then the scripture tells us, this is, this is wonderful. When, when the, the angel the angel comes, an angel. Uh, we we see that the the shepherds are are in the in the fields uh, by night. Now um, I, I'm jumping ahead, but let me since I'm here, let me go here. Uh, Jesus uh, was not born on on December the 25th. We 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 understand that. We know this, but there is a, a the letter of the law and there's a spirit of the law, and hopefully we will get to that. All right, but it suffices right now to say that, that, that Jesus, uh, when we, oftentimes when we, when we try to, to, to pick at the date, one of the things we talk about, well, there were shepherds in the field by night and, you know, oh, and it's cold. Well, right now in the Middle East, it's not winter. Right now, it's the, the, the climate is different. Amen. Amen. It, it, it's hot there in the Middle East. Now, I'm not saying um, uh, that Jesus was, was born on that day. Again, it's a, it was a pagan holiday that things came, came into being later on. But we need to look at what the spirit of, of this text is talking about. We're not, we're not worshiping the day. We're worshiping the birth of the day. We're worshiping uh, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I personally don't have to have a particular day to worship him. But sometimes we need to be reminded of some things. Sometimes we, in the Old Testament, you saw oftentimes that, that they would have uh, special days. It, they were com commemorating certain things so that it was being placed in their minds because sometimes we can get so caught up in life that we forget some things. And, and it may not be because we, we are, are trying to forget them, but sometimes life can, can bring so many things at you that you forget some things. So it's a good thing to be reminded, amen. Sometimes when you're, when you're at church and, and you, you, you're not feeling the best, sometimes the praise leader has to remind you that God is good. And when they, they remind you how good God is, then that places you, that takes you out of, of uh, your 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 boo-hoos, it takes you out of, uh, of your distresses, it takes you out of thinking about uh, what's going to happen tomorrow on your job or thinking about who did this to you and that to you. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, 
then there is a response from the soul. The soul begins to cry out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. So, so it is here, amen, as, as we look um, at, at commemorating the day, amen, not the date, the day, the, the, the day that Jesus was born, whether, whether it was in April, whether it was in June, whether it was in October, it, it really does not matter. What matters is, is that we're coming together and we're saying, God, we appreciate the sacrifice that you made, that you give for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All right. So, so the, 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 here were uh, the uh, shepherds, they're out, angel comes, and they're afraid. Well, I'm telling you, if if if, if something just you, you're sitting there talking, and all of a sudden some somebody pops up, it probably startled you too. But the angel tells them, "I bring you good news." Amen. He he tells them. Let me read it here again. He says, "I bring you good news. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Not not, not to, as I said before, not just to select people." not just the people that you choose, amen, not just people that you discriminate against, not just people that, that, that you uh, have something against them. He says, I bring great joy, amen, to all people. He says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. Then he tells them something. He says, he says, and this shall be a sign to you. This is, this is how you're going to know that you're in the right place. He says, he said, you shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. All right. So they go. They say, hey, let's get, let's get up out of here. Amen. Before then, uh, let, let me let me just toss this out there. Before then, they looked up and and there was the the the, the heavenly host. They that was the baddest choir that there's ever been. The heavenly host was was singing. You know, uh, they they talk about. Um, I'm trying to think the hands. Uh, what is the name of, of that? But anyway, is Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. For the Lord God of omnipotent reigneth forever, forever. Hallelujah. You, you know that song. Amen. Amen. I believe that the, 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 the uh, angels were rejoicing. Amen. Even though some of them were wondering, I don't understand. What is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that thou visiteth him? You know, I, 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 don't, I don't quite understand why you would do this, but hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, they went to town. Amen. Worshiping the Lord. All right. So they said that you'll find them in the city of David. Okay. You'll find them in Bethlehem. And he said, you're going to find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. All right. Now let's, let, let's look at this. The swaddling clothes. What, what are swaddling clothes? Now, the swaddling prevents a baby from thrashing about and is intended to provide a secure feeling. Again, swaddling clothes. Swaddling prevents a baby from thrashing about and is intended to provide a secure feeling. Now, uh, this was um, in a... A, a manger. This this was was swaddling clothes that that was actually for for animals for for lambs. Now it's important for us to recognize that that um, to keep a child from thrashing about. Uh, many uh, most times you get a blanket and we wrap the, the the baby in the blanket, and that's to help to protect the child and to keep it from thrashing about. Right. Amen. And to keep it warm, 
uh, that secure feeling, amen? Well, understand this, that um, when they took care of lambs, and, and in particular, uh, again, uh, this is in Bethlehem, and we're talking about these lambs that were being raised uh, for ceremonial purposes, for sacrificing, amen. So as such, they would keep great care of the lambs uh, and would go as far as to swaddle them so that there was no blemish on them. In other words, they, they, they put it in uh, the, 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 the lambs into um, that wrapping in order so that they wouldn't hurt themselves or they wouldn't blemish themselves because they were to be perfect in order to be sacrificed. So even here, the Lamb of God was placed in swaddling clothes, amen, and, it, and the idea was that he was that perfect lamb without spot or blemish or any such thing. So he was that perfect lamb, amen. And of course, um, the lamb was uh, born where lambs are supposed to be born. It was born in the stable. As I said before, he wasn't at Holiday Inn. He was, uh, no, no, he wasn't in that type of place, but he was born in a stable. Now that is, is um, uh, the story as it, it goes uh, through the mouthpiece called uh, Luke. Now let's look in Matthew. If you have your Bibles, Matthew chapter 2. We were in Luke 2, now we're going to Matthew chapter 2. We're going to begin uh, reading at verse number 7. Matthew chapter 2, verse 7 through 14. Then Herod, when he had uh, privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently, what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child, underline young child. And when they had found him, bring me word that I may come and worship him also. No, he had, he had his own agenda, a hidden agenda. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Again, young child. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed to their own country another way. And when they were departed, Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed in to Egypt. Now, we have the account as told by uh, Luke and the account as told by Matthew. And uh, it's, it's important for us to see that when we look at the two and, and, and compare them side by side, that these are, are two different events. Yes, it is the birth of Jesus Christ, it, but it does not take place at the same time. It doesn't take place, I don't believe, in a few days of each other, but I believe that it takes place perhaps a couple of years. 
and there is there is there is is uh, credible um, uh, information that seems to bolster this idea. Um, uh, first thing we 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 want you to see is is that the uh, wise men came from another country. Okay, uh, the wise men uh, were were not. Um, across the water, uh, across right into uh, California or something like that from here. They were in another country. Uh, they did not have, as we said in our lesson on Sunday, they did, they did not fly uh, on United Airlines. They didn't have a 747. They did not have a, a helicopter to transport them. They, they did not have um, an SUV um, to get them from one place to another, uh, didn't have a Jeep to get them from one place to the other. No, they either walked or they had a man camels or um, some horses or something like that, some animal, um, beast of burden uh, to take them from one place to the other. So it didn't happen overnight. In other words, when they saw the star and they became intrigued with the star, it did not happen overnight that they made it from where they lived. And the scripture uh, tells us that they were in their own country. So they were in another country and they had to make their way uh, to another place. Now, we also must remember that there were no roads like we have nowadays. It wasn't like, oh yeah, well they could at least followed the path all the way from one side to the other. There were hills, there were valleys, there were mountains that they had to cross over, amen, to get to where Jesus was. Oh, that's a message in itself. How far will you go to get to Jesus? They went through mountains. I don't know if they had to cross over uh, a river or cross over uh, a sea. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but what I do know is it that it took them time to get to where Jesus was. And we're saying that it probably took um, about two years because, and, and we think about this because uh, you'll recall that it was Herod uh, when the wise men did not come back to him. Um, he was threatened by this, this, uh, this king. And he killed all the boys that were two years and under. So that gives us an idea that, that um, uh, Jesus was not a babe as is described in Luke chapter two, but he's referred to as a young child, a young child. So how old is a young child? Was he, was he crawling or was he a toddler? Um, Around two years is what many speculate that Jesus was. And so um, it took time for these wise men to come. Uh, in in the, the, the passage in um, Matthew chapter 2, um, Jesus is referred to as the young child, the young child, seven times, seven times. In um, Luke, he's referred to as the babe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, but he is referred to as a young child. And uh, we note that they saw the young child with Mary and fell down and worshiped him. Now, who were they worshiping? They were worshiping the young child and not Mary. This is one of the problems that we have even with, with some of, of, of our, our uh, those that believe in putting a lot of emphasis on Mary, the mother of Jesus, amen. They worshiped Jesus. And let me say this, just on an aside here, Jesus, Jesus's mother uh, was there when he died on the cross. And Jesus, before he died, speaks to to John and says, John, this is your mother. Mom, this is your son. He makes sure that his mother's taken care of. 
But when the day of Pentecost was fully come, Mary was in the upper room with everybody else. And it Mary had to receive the Holy Ghost like everybody else. We'll leave it right there. Amen. So they worshiped him, the young child, excuse me, and not Mary. And the Bible said, and they presented unto them gifts, um, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And I want you to note here, and they, and they, they presented unto him gifts. We um, have sang songs that do not, um, are, are not accurate. One of the songs at Christmas time that, that we sing, we three kings of Orient are bearing gifts. We travel the far. Well, they, they were kings or they were wise men, amen, traveling and they gave gifts. But there's nowhere in scripture that says there were three of them. Okay, note that. He doesn't say that there were three kings. He says what was offered as gifts were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And we don't know how much gold it was, how much frankincense it was, how much myrrh it was, amen. Uh, but they offered this to the child, amen. And so, so this, is, this is, again, interesting um, how we can take uh, what the world says or, or what someone has come up with, uh, songs and different things like this, and we've made them gospel when it is not gospel, okay? Now, there may have been three. I don't know, and you don't know. The scripture does not bear out that there were three, amen. But the important thing was they worship the child and they brought gifts to the child. The gifts were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold is the gift, the gift of gold, was considered worthy of a king. The buildings and treasures of a king and a pharaoh from ancient past have left reminders that gold was the price, the prize rather, of rulers and kings. So the fact that that um, uh, gold was presented was certainly appropriate because he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Both secular and biblical kings greatly valued gold. And um, we can see uh, the next was frankincense. Frankincense comes from, uh, comes from tree resins. Frankincense was once greatly valued throughout the Middle East, from Rome to India. It was very expensive and has a wonderful fragrance. Frankincense also uh, occurs 15 times in the Bible. All right. Uh, in, uh, let me see, where, where is that at here? It is revealed that it its use was primarily uh, as an ingredient for sacrifice. And it was, if we look in Solomon, Song of Solomon chapter three and six and verse tra chapter four and verse 14, it reveals that it was also an ingredient for perfume. Since fragrance, uh, since, <laughs> excuse me, since frankincense was primarily used in the Bible for worship, frankincense speaks of the worship of God. So we had one that, that uh, was worthy of a king, okay? The gold was considered worthy of a king. The frankincense speaks of the worship of God. So there is, is the gold, the frankincense, and finally we have the myrrh. The myrrh was less expensive than frankincense, but still highly valued. 
Myrrh is, is referred to 17 times in the Bible. Myrrh was used for a variety of purposes um, in biblical times, such as a perfume. It was an anesthetic and it was for burial embalming. It was also an ingredient in anointing oil, and it was also used to deodorize clothes. That's interesting. Uh, un until I started started studying this, uh, those are some things I didn't know. Um, but it is a blessing when we recognize uh, um, uh, how each of these gifts that were brought to Jesus uh, had some uh, it had to do with who he was and the things that he would end up doing. All right. So let me say this. Uh, first, second Corinthians three and six. I'm, I'm out of time. Uh, says that we are, are, are ministers of the New Testament. Um, he says the letter killeth, but the spirit makes the life. And I want to say this. Um, the, the letter of the law is, is that that uh, December the 25th uh, was not the day that Jesus was born. Yes, the letter of the law uh, tells us that, that it was wrapped around a pagan holiday. Yes, but the spirit of the law, the spirit of law is one that is, that is uh, in, into giving, giving of oneself, giving uh, to the less fortunate, giving to someone that can't help themselves. That's what it's all about. Christ came to help somebody that couldn't help themselves. Amen. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. We who could not help ourselves. Amen. Christ died for us. Christ said, okay, this is my son. This is my daughter. This is the world. And the world has lost their connection with the father. But I am going to step in and I'm going to be the mediator between God and man. Not only that, I am going to redeem man. I'm going to buy him back. I'm going to, amen, place him back in right connection with God. I am he that knoweth no sin became sin that we may become the righteousness of God in him. He, because of what he did, he placed me in right standing with God. I have right standing. You have right standing because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank God for everlasting life. Thank God that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Thank God that he manifested himself in flesh, came down through 42 generations, came down through the lineage of David, of one man who was an adulterer, a murderer. He came through the lineage of Rahab that was a prostitute. He came down through the lineage of people who were, were, were not perfect, people who, who had sinned, but yet the Lamb of God came through all of that junk, came through all of that mess with a message of salvation. Amen. And I thank God for him. I thank God for his mercy, for his grace. I thank God that because of him, we are saved, we are sanctified, we are filled with the baptism of the Spirit. I thank God that I have a new walk in Jesus Christ because of what he did. The little lamb of God became a man, the lion of Judah. The little lamb of God became a man, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And he is, is, is ever, he is ever with us. Amen. And we thank God for all that he has done for us. Amen and amen and amen. I trust you got something out of the lesson today. I certainly got something out of it as we were, were sharing. Amen. I want you to know that, amen, on Sunday is the last Sunday of 2021. If you're in our area, please come by and see us. 
The address of our church, New Vision Christian Fellowship, is 9350 East Brown Road here in the city of Mesa, Arizona. That is east of Ellsworth on Brown. Our service begins at two o'clock. We love to see you there. Amen. And God bless you as you, you look uh, at this year, uh, this Christmas season, um, do for someone as Jesus would. You may not be able to give your life, amen, as a sacrifice, but there are some things that we can do, amen, to express to the world that he is alive, he's real, and there is more to, to Christmas than gifts, gift giving. There's more to Christmas because it's about Christ must. Christ must be in Christmas. And Christ is the reason for the season. God bless you in Jesus' name.